Welcome aboard the Fourth Watch, which is sponsored by the good people at the Fair Group, of which I, Ned Scarsbrick, am a volunteer. This particular podcast is to be posted on the 4th of July, 2013, to honor those who laid the foundation of the land of the free. For without their sacrifice, I would think that our lives today would be considerably different. Brothers and sisters, freedom is not free. It has always been paid for by the lives of patriots. Those who were willing and those who are still willing to give up their todays for the future of our children's tomorrows. Oh, this is just great. Brother Ned goes off on another one of his political rants. No, this is about freedom. The freedom of speech. Those who cherish it and those who abuse it. I have planned this podcast for some time, and with current events, this freedom has become even more important. Benjamin Franklin once said, Any society that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security will deserve neither and will lose both. Are we getting to the point where this view is starting to become the truth? I would hope not. But I hear the voices of those who would limit our liberties to ensure security, or in this case, religious liberty and speech, in order to silence those who disagree with a very vocal minority. I just got through reading a a blog post about flunking sainthood by uh, Jenna Reese uh, that follows this line of reasoning. Let me me give you the Brother Ned uh, paraphrase here. She says, uh, I like communicating with thoughtful and civil readers, whom I imagine to be the silent majority. Their voices seem to be outweighed by the voracious, livid few. A little more colorful than my view, but I think it's pretty accurate. She says that in uh, March, she had begun deleting comments from angry Mormons, angry ex-Mormons, angry evangelicals who hate Mormons, and angry or random guys who uh, blog from their parents' basements. For all she knows, this could be the same person. She's concerned that uh, as she reads other religious blogs, how spiritually poisonous the blogging culture can be. Ex-Mormons tell Mormons that they've never met that they are wholesale idiots for believing. Evangelicals tell Mormons that they reject the Bible, worship a totally different Jesus and are going to hell. I've heard that one a lot. Mormons respond in kind that there is only one religious truth and gee whiz, uh, it just so happens that uh, they own the patent on it. Well, go figure. Then there are Mormons that tell other Mormons whose opinions they reject that any holders of those opinions should be excommunicated, lose their temple recommends, or just quit the church uh, because they clearly hate the prophet. Well, I've met a few people like that. Remember in last December, uh, this came to a dangerous head when the women who founded the Wear Pants to Church Day initiative actually received death threats. Yeah, death threats. The death threats were from fellow Latter-day Saints. For wearing pants? (laughs) And all the people in the examples above go to church and consider themselves followers of Jesus. How is this possible? How did we raise a generation of Christians who feel it is not only acceptable, but somehow an obligatory duty for them to call each other terrible names? Here's some basic ideas that I think that the fair tries to emulate really well. One. Disagree with a position. Back it up with evidence, links or quotes, then stop. You know, President uh, Dieter Utdorf, second counselor in the first presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has a common phrase that when things start going awry, he says, just stop it. Coming from the background of post-World War II Germany, where he was raised as a small child, I think that he and his family would be well aware of the consequences of censorship 
and the responsibility that goes with freedom of speech. Now, don't end a comment with an insult. And please don't quote the other person's position and say, LOL, mocking other people's ideas with a digital equivalent of a point and laugh is not exactly the height of mature behavior. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, I'm rubber and you're glue and everything you say bounces off me and sticks to you, ha-ha. And no tag backs, neither. Don't speculate on your target's eternal fate, temple worthiness, or intelligence. And finally, a catch-all rule, don't say anything that you would not say in person to this person if you met him or her in church. Let's rise above it, people. You shall know them by their fruits. Oh, I like her blog. I think that was well done. Give this, uh, give this lady a gold star. I don't think you can bring anyone to Christ by cramming it down their throat or beating them over the head with the truth. Let's look at a scripture, uh, Proverbs thirty-one twenty-six. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. It is Brother Ned's view that we all have the right to express what we want, how we feel, and what we think. But with that right comes the responsibility to do it in a clear and a kind manner. I guess those who are fans of the movie Moonstruck that uh, Cher starred in would not agree with such uh, communication skills. And there are those who have more colorful styles. Are you crazy? Get over it. Give him a good firm backhand. Do you want to live in that world? I don't. Life is hard. Let's let's not make it worse, people. Now, I'm not talking about the Marine Corps or some emergency situation where life and death is the order of the day. There are times when strong, very direct language is essential in certain circumstances. I agree with that, and I face that on a regular basis. This is about everyday civil discourse. Now, for those of you who live in Puckerbrush, Montana, uh, discourse means a... Uh, conversation. Was that a shot? I I thought I heard a shot. Did you hear a shot? It sure sounded like a shot. Then again, you never know. Now, was I trying to be funny in a sarcastic manner? Or was I giving the city of Buckerbrush and those who live in such places a put-down as low-life rednecks who wouldn't know what I meant even if I explained it to them? As a matter of fact, I... uh, I made up the city of Puckerbrush, Montana. I don't think there really is a city. So don't get on your high horse here. Just, let's just relax. How about if we get off the judgment wagon and think the best about our brothers and sisters? I have no desire to run anyone down. And if something that I did or said upset or hurt them, I'm quick to apologize. And I do what I can to repair the damage. People are sensitive And when it comes to religion, the emotional pain that can be inflicted in careless or deliberate speech is never, never acceptable. Being a bully is not a church calling. It is not an office of the priesthood and is certainly not becoming of anyone who has taken upon themselves the name of Christ. Our freedom of speech, in the gospel sense, ends at the beginning of someone else's nose. You you know, this reminds me of an episode of The uh, Muppets, uh, the TV show that was back in the uh, 80s or 90s. I can't remember when it was. And uh, They used to have uh, actually famous actors that came on as guests. And in one episode, there was uh, Milton Berle, who was a uh, pretty renowned uh, comedian. And in the background, they had these two guys up there on a uh, balcony area that were uh, old, uh, crusty hecklers. And so... um, Milton gets on stage and he goes, uh, don't start with me, boys. I've been a successful comedian over half my life. Oh, yeah? Well, how come we got this half? Oh, yeah? You think you could do better? We couldn't do worse. Oh, yeah? Can you sing? No. Can you dance? No. Can you tell funny stories? No. Then what would you do? Just what you're doing. You know what your problem is, Burl? You're too close to the audience. Well, uh, how far back do you want me to go? 
A a little more. Uh, How's this? No, some more. Well, how's this? A little bit more. Well, how far back do you want me to go? You got a car? Hey, Burl, looks like you're having a problem. Yeah, these, these guys up in the box, they keep heckling me, and I just can't get them to stop. Well, well, can I help you out? Well, would you please? Yes. Well, which way did you come in? In the church, there have been those whom we would consider by uh, today's standards to be uh, uh, colorful. Uh, Porter Rockwell comes to mind. Then there was uh, J. Golden Kimball. Today we have uh, Robert Kirby. Uh, he, he's a columnist for the Salt Lake Tribune newspaper. And Brother Kirby has a, a humor uh, religion gig in the lifestyle section of this paper. I personally like the curb, and there are others who would not touch his so-called articles with a 10-foot pole. As a matter of fact, uh, Kirby is going to be one of the speakers at the fair's annual conference this year in the Orem uh, Convention Center. Kirby? At the fair conference? What low-life, lame brain thought this one up? I don't know. (laughs) But there are those who take themselves way too serious. And our ability to laugh at ourselves is an important part of humility, in my view. Why should we listen to what you have to say? You don't. These podcasts are not about me being right. You got that right. So don't listen. This is still the land of the free, because of the brave. There are no propaganda towers blaring my voice so you're forced to listen. You want this to stay the land of the free? Well, sure. And lighten up. We are free to choose life and liberty according to the light of the gospel, or death and captivity according to the master of all misinformation. That sound about right? Well, yeah. Like you know what is right about all this religion stuff? No, I don't. I just want to keep my freedom. The freedom purchased by the blood of our forefathers. And I, for one, will not desecrate that blood to pander to any popular sympathy. Let's be kind, tender-hearted one to another, and keep our freedom of speech by being the fruit of that freedom. You hear that? Sounds like the ways of life are calling us back to uh, taking care of the day-to-day. I want you to know that I love this country. I love the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to maintain that freedom for our children. And I think that one of the primary ways that we can do that is to keep our focus on the Savior. First thing in the morning when we get up, just like when he met his apostles. As we close today, I want you to know that I appreciate your time, that I know your time is precious, and that I do not own it. It is yours to decide to do with it as you please. And as part of the freedom of life, the Navy hymn to me is an expression of that freedom given to us by our God, and that as we choose to focus on the Savior and his skills and his talent and his love for us, We will maintain our freedom. It's now time to hear from my lovely wife, Bonnie, who sings alto, Sandra Schmidt, who sings soprano, David Reese, who sings tenor, and Stephen Hatch, who sings bass. The Navy Hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. 